This is what planet Mars should expect from us in the next years. I'm going to tell you about the fourth planet in our solar system and its future with SpaceX and NASA. Mars has been our target since 1971, when the first satellite called Mariner 4 was sent to orbit. Why Mars? Mars is the closest planet in our solar system, and scientists believe that there was life many, many years ago. This is a photo of how the ancient Mars looked like. Also a photo of how it could look down on the surface with water. Before I tell you what will happen in the future, let's talk about the past of this planet. Mars has currently a few rovers collecting data on its surface. These are the five most important and the best. Sojourner, 1997. The two identify rovers, Spirit and Opportunity, 2004. Curiosity, 2012. And Perseverance, 2020. Nearly all of the rovers don't work. Only Curiosity, Perseverance, and Chinese Zhurong. If you want to know more about the rovers itself, check this video here. To this date, 18 spacecraft have been sent there. Seven of them are currently active. These are the satellites orbiting the planet. Now let's talk about the future and how Elon Musk wants to take 1 million people to Mars by 2050, and if it is even possible. Yes, everybody wants us to colonize Mars, not only because it would be so cool, but also because we would be able to fully function on another planet. This will bring a totally new perspective to space exploration, and we will be closer to becoming a multi-planetary species and type 1 civilization. So, you probably wonder what's the plan, and when will we do it? The first missions with astronauts are proposed for 2030 or later. This mission's purpose is to fly around and orbit Mars, then come back to Earth. You will be able to see this flyby and orbit in 2024, but not to Mars, but to the Moon. The Artemis II mission has the same purpose as those flyby missions. The scary thing is that if the Artemis II succeeds, it's not guaranteed that the orbital missions will succeed on Mars. After all, Mars is 200 times farther than the Moon and is slightly bigger. It also has a communication delay. This delay is around 17 minutes due to how far the red planet is from Earth and how fast the radio waves travel. Eventually, the seven-month journey to Mars won't be easy for the crew, but that's the minimum of what they will be facing on Mars later. Crews on Mars will have to work 10 to 14 hours a day due to the lack of supplies and speed of building a base there. Now let me introduce the biggest rocket that will eventually support these flight, flights to the Moon and mainly Mars. The Starship is a 121 meters high rocket and has a liftoff mass of 5,000 metric tons. It is the largest and most powerful rocket ever made on Earth. 5,000 metric tons is a lot, well, on Earth, yes. But transporting people and all needed equipment to build a base on Mars, no. You can imagine it like 1 million liters of water. By the year 2050, there should be a pretty big colony on Mars. A lot of cities, transports, vehicles, greenhouses, research facilities, and more. The thing is that it is nearly impossible to send 1 million people to Mars by 2050. More likely, only 1,000 people will be walking on Mars in the first proper city. Then, another thousand people will be sent every year in reusable rockets. This calculation tells us that around 20,000 people will be living on the Red Planet in 2050. That's more realistic. The colony on Mars itself would have to be independent in time. Not only because there could be an atomic World War III, but also because of the communication block. This problem is that once in a time, the Sun stands between the Earth and Mars. This means that people on Earth won't be able to send signals and radio waves to people on Mars, and the people on Mars can't wait for us to send them other supplies. That's why they have to be fully self-sufficient. Only the best people will get the opportunity to visit Mars and live there, mostly higher engineers, scientists, and others. But what would it actually be to live on the surface of Mars? Well, there is no water or food at all. Until we find or make water, the water needed to support life will have to be transported from Earth, also the food. But don't worry, most food on Mars will be genetically engineered and grown in the tunnels and labs. Most people will eventually live in the ground. The tunnels will serve as a refuge 
due to the critical windstorms that can sometimes appear on the surface. The future base on Mars will probably be 3D printed. Martian soil would be excavated from the ground and mixed with water ice to create a material similar to concrete. Autonomous robots would then use this material to 3D print the structures. Artificial intelligence will help us a lot during the first years on Mars. Another problem is the lack of oxygen to breathe in the cabins. The planted artificial trees and specialized turbines will help us with that. They can convert carbon dioxide into oxygen. There would have to be a gym on Mars. The gravity on Mars is only 38% as strong as Earth's gravity. Doing some exercise will be recommended to maintain muscles and bone density, as well, the health. Another important thing to say is that NASA, SpaceX, and other companies won't send humans to Mars just for research. The colonization on Mars will be profitable. The civilization will be mining valuable metals on Mars and will also mine the asteroids and asteroid belt in the future. The sales of these materials can make the industry a lot of money in the next decades. So we can say that Mars will be the hub of the space mining industry. We don't know the exact date when we will visit Mars, but we believe it will be soon. Living on Mars can make a huge upgrade for us. Colonizing Mars will be the biggest challenge for humanity in history. Thank you for watching and be ready for another interesting videos. See you later.